My name is Joey Dagda, AKA Dagda. I'm a professional recording artist. I'm originally known as Joseph Crowley Jr. I've been recording since I was about 24, but my love for hip hop started at a, at a really young age. I started writing myself in about fourth grade. I was uh, the DARE officer, the Drug Abuse Resistance Education Officer in a school district. And uh, I got called in by a principal and the principal showed me this illicit rap uh, lyrics and it was very inappropriate and the principal told me it was one of his fourth or fifth graders that wrote this and the thing is 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 inappropriate as it was for that age group it was very very good writing as far as uh, rap goes and I thought you know this kid's pretty good so that's where my relationship started with Joe Crowley Growing up in the 90s, I was influenced heavily by like Tupac, Biggie, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Cypress Hill, um, and you can definitely hear those influences in my music. I rap with, um, sometimes on a quicker note, some people call it double time, um, but I really, uh, really love cadences and flow and bringing that kind of element to music. Let me tell you one thing, this music game is real disgusting. Trust me, it'll get your brain combusting and turn it just like a Mustang. And I'm a saint, if you really ain't in it all the way, you better just put that shit aside and save it for another day. Cause you really ain't worth it if you ain't working. What is your purpose? You Years later, I was uh, working undercover uh, with the Michigan State Police Narcotic Unit in Detroit. And I had stopped by this gas station. And on the counter was a, a CD of Joey Dagda, and I looked close, and it was Joe Crowley. And he had reinvented himself um, as Joey Dagda, and I was really excited to see this CD. So I, I purchased it, and I tracked him down, and um, I've, I've supported him ever since. Around the age of 24 or so, I, I realized I wanted to be a professional musician, and I knew the only way to do it was to, to dig in and, and attempt it. So with some student loan money, I bought a laptop and some recording gear, and I started recording myself. I would perform at local bars and, and clubs, and um, I, was, uh, I was able to get recognized by a radio personality on Detroit's Channel 955, and invited to to come on the air. Dagda came across my radar. He was rolling with a few of the different artists that was really making noise out there. Um, he was doing it big, Down River, uh, Dot's finest. You know, he, he was making some noise and I, I, I peeped him out standing out from the crowd. At that point, I knew I needed a professional sound. Uh, and that's when I met Tony Rizzo, the Grammy Award winning engineer who I've recorded most of my work with. And I got that opportunity to go on Channel 955 and debut my song After Party, uh, which got local play for quite a while. And uh, from there, I just started doing bigger and better shows. Where's the after party? There's an after party at 215, just close the bar. They want to know where to go with the local star. Load up your car, we ain't going far. I was management for Dagda Music from, I want to say, somewhere in the realm of 2011 till about 2017-ish. We initially met uh, back in high school. We played football together. And then I want to say after I graduated college, we had then kind of came back together. We were hanging out. I think he may have invited me to a show or something that he had going on. And then we thought, well, well hell, maybe this might uh, be a good combination if I could help with the business side of things. And we, we kind of made things go. I was doing a lot of shows at places like Harpo's. We had linked in good with Live Nation. I was getting a lot of big shows at St. Andrew's Hall. We were able to get in there, open for Bone Thugs and Harmony, uh, Yellow Wolf, stuff like that. We performed on, you know, the Gathering of the Juggalos, and I mean, that's a festival that is just an, an enormous amount of numbers, right? Um, locally, though, I would say the biggest show that we were a part of was probably Yellow Wolf, which was a sold-out show of over 2,000 people, and you got 
Cypress Hill was a sold out show of over two or 3,000 people as well. Smack heads, get your wig cracked, pop your top like every single can inside that 12 pack. Smell that, yeah, the weed'll let you know. Dag does an artist, and uh, that's what I like listening to, you know. I mean, he stayed true to himself. You know, he don't go out his lane, he, he speak from the heart, and you can tell that when you listen to his songs. So I had a, a, a pretty busy 2015. Um, I had released my uh, all original mixtape, Bar Soap. And then in, in 2016, Galeski uh, asked me to come on board and help out with the with the first group of Down River Detroit Student Film Consortium. It's made up of an eclectic group of kids, uh, many of who have faced adversity, and we teach them the art of making motion pictures, which includes scores and soundtracks, which Joe heads. As you do this stuff, you know, being an artist, you can't help but you know, if you got a good heart, start helping people and, and bringing people up through the ranks. We started uh, working in the studio with the kids. We had some kids originally that were inspired to be rappers, and so I was able to kind of teach them how to write, teach them how to record. He teaches them the right way. Um, a lot of these kids want to get into the rap scene, and you know, there, there are some boundaries and some rules. And, and Joe, Joe's clear about those, and uh, he's really great with the kids. Games in my lane, man, no one can stop me. All the lanes claim the same, but they bite and copy. Sloppy, but not me when I approach the microphone beneath the lights and smoke. We also had some really talented singers, and so I would, uh, I would take the kids to the studio and do all the soundtrack work for the uh, program. And um, I'd say creatively, um, I kind of immersed myself in that, and, and we had been working on that for years, a lot of really great award-winning projects. So this is a great way of kids to, to have a voice, and Joe's, uh, like I said, he's a great asset.